I really needed this award, or not the award, I just I needed something positive and good right now. It has been a rough couple of years. It's been tough. And for you to see that, that I got I was in a funk and down. And when I got this phone call from Sylvia Gordon, she Sylvia says, I'm, I'm sitting at or can you talk? And it's on the cell, I'm in the nursery now. I'm coming, I'm sitting at your table when we finally get on my mom. I'm gonna be sitting at your table. And I think she's on her way to Tangerine, Florida. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not ready for company. What's, what's going on? And she said, no, at convention. And I thought, oh yeah, we always sit together at convention. And she said, no, Miss Wendell Butler Award winner. And so then you cry. And then you say, and particularly at this point in time, I don't, I almost said I don't want this thing. I, I just, then my sister says, you will take this award, young lady. You will. It's about your past. It's not about your future. It's what you've done. And this is fine. Your worst case scenario, you can put it on your resume. <laughs> I said, you are absolutely right. So, this, this is the first thing I have to say to you guys. It's a quote. At times, our own light goes out, and it is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. Albert Schwarzer. Okay, you guys have rekindled my flame just like that. We love you. <laughs> it is indeed an honor to be a member of such an elite group of industry leaders. I did, we don't know how this thing goes, so I didn't know if they were going to be named off or whatnot. I know the ones that are here. Gary Hennon, Sylvia Gordon, Jerry Fry, Buck Worcester, Roger and Janice Brooks, Kevin Kraft, Alan Shapiro, Russ Mueller, Joe Shaloni, and Randy Strode. The ones that are not here at the moment, or are, you may be here, I, I haven't bumped into you. Gary Roberts, Tommy Aiello, George Hagney, Joe mm -hmm. Cole. Marvin Gross, Bill Klinger, and Jim Batson. So, wow, that's this overwhelming. There's people I need to thank, and I first off want to thank the good Lord. And I have prayed harder in the last couple of years than I have in my life. And today is one of those days where you, I don't want to ask for anything. I just want to say thank you for the blessings that are in my life. Would you close this industry major? I want to thank my sweet husband, and I always introduce David as my sweet husband, and indeed he is. He's always let me be me, and that's a bit of a hard thing to do. <laughs> I want to thank my three children who have put up with me in my hours at the nursery, and if you would, Brandon, people may not know you don't look like me, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Quick side story on Spencer. When he got his first cell phone, he's in the back of the car and we had an interim or something. Here's my phone, get your cousins, get your uncles, get emergency numbers. And we stop at a restaurant and his older brother takes his phone and he picks it up and he goes, Ben Belusky? What, what are you doing with Ben Belusky in your phone? And Spencer's like, Ben's my friend and you know, I might be in one day. And I said, you leave Ben in that phone. So, one of the first things I want to thank my daddy, who's 93 and a half years old. He's an aviation engineer, and he's not here today on Father's Day weekend. And I'm really thinking of my dad. And it's funny, the first 10 years of your life, you add the half. And the last 10 years of your life, you add the half. And we hope daddy's around for the next 10. You know, but my dad was huge impact. My sister, Mary, who's here, Dr. Mary Miller, hardworking entrepreneur, and has given up time and effort to travel. She has clocked me today. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm serious. I've lost some weight, so my clothes didn't fit. She had some clothes. <laughs> you saw in the video, Chet Peckett. He is indeed my mentor. 
Irv, I'm so thrilled that you got the picture of Irv Peckett, his dad. was an impact on my life. It was Peckett's S apostrophe, plural possessive. And I do believe that Chet Peckett has been in more nurseries. Randy Strode and I just had this conversation than anybody in the world. Chet travels. When he hired me, I was 18 years old for $2.85 an hour. He said, I will teach you all I know. We'll go visit nurseries and you can have some time off. I mean, there were no benefits, but an 18-year-old from Virginia coming to Florida, time off sounded good. It was the best thing I've ever done was start out with Chet. I want to thank the late Dr. Gene Trotter with the Wedgwood program that brought that agriculture to Florida. His wife, Gail, and Dottie are still majorly instrumental in my career in life. The newly tendered and promoted Dr. Hannah Carter. The impact that she's had, you've seen in the room, it is just unbelievable. I was in class three, which is, was Flipnard, and I became pregnant with Spender during that program. They wanted me to name him that, Florida Leadership for Ag and Natural Resources. <laughs> I got to correct one mistake, and Linda's eyes went like that when it happened. My husband was in class six, not class four. We are the first spouse couple to go through the program, and everyone's so proud of their class. You know, we're the best. And class six, not four, was stated in the video. So, David, stands corrected. You got kicked me under the table. Gina Barb Batson, my manager, Debbie Shipley, and the rest of my crew who have stuck by me with less hours and less benefits and hard work. My neighbor, Kenny Stewart, who, God bless him, we share everything take guns, tractors, or outside, which means, you know, it's, it's nice to have good neighbors. And my suppliers for being patient, and my vendors, and some of you are in the room. And this whole industry is running that way right now. I had an attorney tell me you need to crawl on your hands and knees to your vendors. And this is how you're going to get through this thing, Nancy. You're going to work this thing out. And, you know, it's going to work. And I would feel it. But the vendors, working with everyone in the industry, has just been phenomenal. I even want to thank my bankers because they're working too. And I'll send them a copy. But Randy Stroh, where are you, Randy? It's been the most optimistic, supportive, local apocalypse folk. Apoc he's indeed very dear to me. We've known Randy since we came to Florida, but he's really gave me that kick in the rear to get me started back up again. All right. I want to congratulate all the winners that we just saw. What, a, what an impressive group. I want to thank, I want to, I want to congratulate the new board members and officers that are stepping up because Lord knows without leadership where we headed. If you can't figure out your purpose, figure out your passion, for your passion will lead you right into your purpose. It's TDJ, so I don't know who he is, but I liked it. <laughs> I am and always have been passionate about this industry, but there's so, the room is full of passion. Wes and Vicki Parrish. How passionate are the two of you and what you've done with Jennifer and made that happen. You've done a great job with the convention. Mike Marshall stepping up, passionate. And Mike, all I got to say is to you, we'll always have Louisville. <laughs> Sandy and Robin Stein, congratulations on the great article. And they, uh, it was in the March issue of the Nursery Management, and the, the title was Dare to be Different. Well, good for you. I'm proud on you. And I stole some quotes from Sandy, and I told him I was going to use them. The first sentence was, don't tell Sandy that you can't do that. So he said, don't tell Nancy you can't do that. He has survived a devastating hurricane and a disturbing recession. And he remains eternally hopeful, which he said may even be a fall. No, sir. He has become a lean, mean, fighting machine. Who in this room hasn't? And if you haven't, you're not going to make it, so you better get there. And his last sentence was, outside of family, Wedgworth was the greatest experience of my life. And I want to say that as well. Outside of family, Wedgworth was the greatest experience of my life. Hmm. That's Sandy Stein, you got a long one. I'm sorry, if I'm taking too long, you can hook me. I told them they may have to hook me. <laughs> Celia Gordon, that's all you know, how special you are to me and Nancy. And, I, you know, and to be the two women in the group, so yeah, woo yeah. I'm the other Nancy in Sylvia's life. What can I tell you? <laughs> Knucklehead, where are you? Look.
Brad Sandler has just become a dear friend, and it's the friendships that have been made. Who did I, I wouldn't know any people without this industry, and, and I got it on, buddy. Uh, the staff at the office that I have traveled with, roomed with, borrowed hair products with, they good, and Ben and Linda for all their support. One of the Wedgworth friends, and you may or may not know, Mark Wheeler's mom recently passed away, and at her funeral, Mark said, just show up and make something good happen. Show up and make something good happen. Well, the folks that I just mentioned have always done good things, shown up and made good things happen, just like you all showed up here today, so thank you so much. Um, I'm sorry that the commissioner is not here. Another fellow who makes good things happen is Commissioner Adam Putnam. And what I, if Adam, if you got any staff or anybody in the room, what I have to say for a word about Adam Putnam is to vote for Adam and whatever office he's running for. Giving you support, keep him going, we need the man. And I'm honored to be appointed to the commission and work with him. I had the following quote on my wall for years. I think it did come from an FNJLA leadership training conference. At a special young man's funeral, this quote was included in the bulletin. It was Mason Smoke. And what it said like that was, we all need to be like Mason. It's by Charles Sidwell. And it's attitude, and you probably know it, but I don't think that we can be over-reminded. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Because I've had a bad attitude. Attitude to me is more important than the facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It may make or break a company, a church, a home, I'll add an association. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. Thank you all once again. Today I have a much needed, better attitude. The definition of association is a group of people organized for a joint purpose. I am thrilled to be associated with every single one of you. Once again, thank you to the convention committee. And this is shameless, but I'm going to do it. I would be remiss not to take this opportunity to mention to this room of such networked people and industry leaders if there's any possibility of potential business to be done with any one of you, I'd like to discuss it. 